again. Today I am self isolating and uh, I thought I'd do another video of how to build a J pole for the two meter band, how to copper tube, and some copper fittings. I did one years ago uh, that I soldered together but this time I was going to make one out of compression fittings so it could be easier for some of you that haven't got access to a blow lamp so I'm going to make one out of compression fittings so it can also be taken down and packed into a bag and it's a bit more portable This is roughly what it's going to look like, the white one. So the white one's just made out of a plastic tube at the moment with a couple of end feed elbows and tees. But that's what it's going to look like. But instead of the end fed, soldered iron, soldered tees and fittings, it's going to be compression on the copper tube. Really simple to make. You just need to get the measurements correct and then solder on the coax in the right places to get the SWR right. Um, here's the online instructions. I can pop a link in the description where to find those for the measurements. Uh, not my plans, someone else's. I've just got them off the internet, but there's plenty out there. So we will have a go. Cut some pipe up. Put it together. And I'll uh, check the SWR after and see how well we get. I've had one of these J-Poles on my chimney for nearly 10 years. And it gets out very, very well. But I thought instead of having it in the chimney, if it can be some sort of a portable version. So we use compression fittings and we'll be able to unscrew that and put it in a backpack. And it's instead of nearly two meters long, you know, it can break down to 500 mil or so. And it can be a portable version. Okay, let's get started. So again, this is online. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make it roughly and then trim it down. Because you can guarantee if you trim it, if you make it exact, it might be too short. So I'm going to maybe add an inch or two to the lengths and then trim them down when it's in place. So as you can see, uh, the first bit is 60 and 5 eighths, that's the long bit on the left, 60 inches and 5 eighths, now that's to the centre of the T. So I'll probably do 62, let's have a look. If you guys are doing it in copper, if you got one of these, they're absolutely brilliant. They round the edges off so there's no sharp burrs. Instead of a hacksaw, they're square cuts, they're fantastic and they're quick. You do have an arrow. Um, there's the arrow, so it goes one way ideally. A little bit hard to grip. Just going to get some pliers. So 
a lovely round edge. So of course normally with plumbing fittings you would put some either PTFE tape around the olive but we're not trying to make it watertight, we want to make it a continuous uh, continuous uh, circuit. We want connectivity, what's the word? I've lost the word, but we're not obviously trying to make it waterproof. An olive. These are clean pipes. If the pipes are dirty, like the ones over there, you want to rub a bit of uh, sandpaper or emery cloth around the joint. These are all brand new fittings. You will maybe want to take them apart now and then and just give them a light rub around to make sure you've still got a good uh, connection. Okay, I'll just tighten these up. So what it does, when you compress the fitting up tight, it crushes this copper or brass band, called an olive, into the fitting and makes it watertight. Don't put any paste around here, don't put any PTFE tape around, you want an electrical circuit. You can do it up by hand, after. So you can take it back down by hand after. So again, this is going to be the shorter bit. So these pipe cutters are great. You just turn them a few times. A sharp edge on a fitting, little cut. So, the nut, these ones are copper olives, doesn't matter, they're all conductive. Do need to tighten them up with some pliers on the first tighten. And you're a fairly good tighten just to make sure that olive. And it doesn't have to be waterproof, so but it just makes that olive sink in. Okay, so that's two two radials, I think they might be called. So I've got a couple of plans, and, and they're they're different. But then I think it depends where you put the coax for the SWR. Right. That one's 
three inches between. This one's an inch and three quarters between. That's made of half inch copper tube. That's made of half inch copper tube. But these are different, so as long as you go by just one, not the other, doesn't doesn't mix it up. It should all right, be alright. So I'm going to put the three inches between the pipes. So this next cut is one that needs to be right. So the pipe to the back of the elbow here is to start to the back of the to the front of the T there. It's going to be three inches. Put up together like so. And then we can unclamp these, and especially this long one. I'll probably cut the long one again, maybe twice. Put compression fittings on it so it can be folded down. short of three inches but I'm going to go with it anyway. At worst you can always change that bit of pipe again and put a new couple of, a couple of uh, olives on a new bit of pipe but let's try it like that. Basically the shape of a J-pop. It's cutting down slightly, inch off, half an inch off here and there, but now it's all together. We can easily do that. So I'll just uh, trim it to where it should be, and then we can start connecting the coax. on after if you're going to leave it up in the weather. These just push over or you could put a copper one on. If you do put a copper one on you might want to trim the edge just down a bit because if it's a copper one or a brass one you'll be adding to the length. But a plastic one pushes on easy. So I'm now going to measure the length and decide where to put another couple of cuts so it can be packed down. If we cut it, the big one to the length of the small radial to 
so you've put in a cut in the small radio radial maybe the big radio could have uh, a couple of cuts in so it can be joined let's have a look decide so I'm thinking something like that so we've got a couple of uh, where's my finger couplers one here and one here if I cut this radio there oh I'm being joined being joined by some puppies if I cut the pipe in two places that would mean it break down into three and the length of the dismantled pack shall we say will be about 20 inches long instead of well two meters plus enough to go in a backpack enough to easily pop into your car and if you want a couple of dogs you can have those as well so I'm going to cut the uh, cut the pipe work and pop in the couplers and I'll show you what it's like then Of course, with it being compression, you just need to make sure that when you've tightened it up, it's not looking like that. If you did, it might be slightly directional. Who knows? Anyway, so obviously trying to keep those parallel. That's a Good topic will it be directional if you aimed it one way okay I'll put this on the floor again Hopefully the dog doesn't want to wee wee on it so that's what it looks like built this nut and this first nut on the elbow will need to be fairly tight so maybe if you're out with this you might need a little spanner if it isn't tight then that radial could lean over the other ones don't matter but this one on the T and this one on the elbow stops this from falling one way Okay, I'll just uh, unfold it, uh, fold it up if you like, see what it looks like. At the moment, it's had a thought. As long as you mark that one as 
the bottom, these can all be tight and then it's not going to slip around. So a short one on the bottom and that will be the size of your folded up J-pole for transporting. So the nuts on the T, the two nuts on the T, and those two nuts on the elbow can all be tight as you like and you never need to undo those. Unless you want to make the pipe work a bit more rounded, but that's not bad as a flat pack. And then to put it back together, as you know this is the bottom one, a bit of tape or something. Screw it up finger tight. Ready to strap against the tree or hang hang from this from the top of a branch. Okay, so I'll uh, put on the um, coax coax. So coax is going to go on. I've already this is an old bit of coax I had. the center through the sheathing and separate the sheathing. There we go. So we're not cutting too much of the sheaving away. It's still in one piece. Obviously you don't want to let these two touch when you're making your connections. So basically one's going to go to one side, one to the other. Now on the copper end fed soldered J-pole I made years ago, I soldered these in place. What I'm going to do on this one, I was looking for some um, Jubilee clips and I was just going to Jubilee clip them in place. I can't seem to find any in my garage. Oh, hang on a minute. I think I know where there might be some. I've got some. I don't know if they're too big though. I'll just try them out. So the Jubilee clips are on the pipe. They were big enough that they went over the fittings. If they're a bit smaller you'll have to uh, unscrew the Jubilee clip. Uh, another thought I had, you could just tie wrap the coax in place if you had enough. It's probably going to fall off. Soldering is obviously best. But for this purpose we're just going to Jubilee clip it in place. So roughly three inches of center. The center of the coax is going to the small 
signal as well. But you don't want to solder until you've got the SWR just right. This way you can move it up and down until you're in the right place. And then you could solder the Jubilee clip in place. a bit I think. Okay that's there. It's not very strong but it'll do for me. You could also get earth wire clamps. Earth wire clamps on it. So excuse me while I move. coax on. Now you notice I've got a plug very short on there. You could always fix one of these directly to the antenna and then all you do is screw in your coax to it. I've got a piece of coax. Now I'm not quite sure of the technicalities I'll just explain. There's a coupler. And we put a choke. If you don't know about chokes, have a look online. Roughly five inch coil of coax. And apparently they seem to help. I've had one up on my permanent J pole on the chimney for a long time um, and it helps. Just to stop all that weight of antenna wire coax pulling on the connections. Trying to 
think where it's going to go. It's going to have to go around there, actually. Because when I undo the fittings, So, ideally, a couple of tie wraps around there to stop the uh, coax from pulling off the uh, SWR points. Just looking at the very top of the antenna, I've put a hole through. I haven't cleaned it up yet, so it's a bit scaggy. And hung um, a cable tie through it. So that way I can just put a hook around here, around a tree branch or a tube of velcro and I can hang this from a branch. The other way is a piece of bigger tube, plastic tube and that can go over the bottom and you can wrap the plastic tube to a pole, a tree, anything as long as the metal doesn't touch some else metal okay I'll see if I can put it up somewhere so I've wrapped it around a piece of wire and I'm going to take it up See how far it go up. Okay, so the top of the uh, antenna is roughly 20 foot high. Just to give it a bit of a chance, my other permanent um, J pole on the chimney is just over probably 25 foot high, so it's not a lot of difference. Let's give it a try and see what we can get. Okay, so before I try, uh, I've just got the SWR meter out, so I haven't touched anything, it's about three inches off the bottom of the elbow. Sorry, there's the meter. Mic 6 Delta Zulu Zulu testing testing Mic 6 Delta Zulu Zulu So about 1.5 uh, I'm sure it will probably get lower than that but I'm not going to bother but you get the general idea 1.5 isn't bad Ooh, maybe not the camera over 1.5 isn't bad first time Let's see if I can make a contact. Channel mode. I'm just going to go for a repeater that I know is about 40 miles away. Mike 6, Delta Zulu Zulu. Mike 6, Delta Zulu Zulu. Listening through for any calls. Yeah, that might be six delta zulu. Just a quick question. Yeah, you are getting into the repeater, no problem there. It's a bit quiet. Uh, I'm not going to hold the mic because it's a little shoot, so I'll always just demonstrate. I've got mic one delta into the radio, no bar in case. Mike 6, Delta, Zulu, Zulu. Thanks very much. Um, just testing a, a quick homemade um, J pole. Um, my location's Barclay, just above Thornbury, which is just above Bristol. Not quite sure how far from the repeater I am, but 
but that's the location. But thanks very much. Mike 6, Delta Zulu, Zulu clear. Okay. So that repeater is uh, quite a distance. I, I'm, I think, probably about 40 miles from home. Uh, top of the antenna is about 20 foot high. Um, I did expect to get it. I could get it with my roll up Slim Jim. That's this one here. If I put it up about 10 foot high. And there we go, so that's a portable, shall we say folding, packable, uh, what's it called? <laughs> J-Pole, J-Pole, 2 metre J-Pole. Any questions please pop below, I'm not particularly technical at all, someone else will probably answer for you. Um, the one at home I have grounded, so I've put a ground wire on. Um, didn't really seem to make any difference as in trans transmitting goes, but there are there is talk about it. But as this was just running off of a handheld, obviously no ground. I haven't grounded it. But yeah, so one packable copper tube. Paul made. Hope this helps and uh, good luck. Thanks very much. Bye bye.